Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 2012 Lexus IS 250. Last time we got everything all pulled and we got it welded up. Our bodywork gnome came in and did all of our bodywork. So now we're going to have to get it ready for the painting gnome. When he edges it all out, you can put it all back together and then you can get it all painted. And then hopefully we'll be able to get it out on the road. But I might be getting ahead of myself. Let's get started. We primed the bodywork and we also primed the pillar underneath where the hinges go, even though the factory didn't. I don't like to have rust problems. So before we put the hinges on, uh, we're going to go ahead and scuff it. That way we don't have to try to get in the little cracks. It's a lot easier to do when there's nothing in your way. So we scuffed the hinge up real good and now we're going to scuff the pillar and then we can put our hinge back up there. I did the same thing on the bottom one and I just used the marks on the bottom one to line it back up. I'm going to do the same thing with the top. And that should put our hinges right back where they belong. Move them around a little bit. And tighten them down. Hopefully for the last time. Let me go ahead and throw our door back up here just to make sure that we have everything lined up. Latch the back of the door. Now we'll start our bolts. Then we'll tighten up our bolts and the shoulders should line our door up where it belongs. Make sure it opens and closes like it's supposed to. Make sure our gap looks nice. And now we can pull the door back off because we haven't taken it off enough yet. And now since our hinges are bolted to the pillar, the painter can go ahead and paint it and it'll be painted just like the factory. We won't have any disturbed paint or anything. Since those bolts are self-aligning on the door to the hinge, uh, it'll put itself right back where it belongs and we won't have to realign anything. So now we can pull our door apart. I'm gonna pull these little plastic caps out that are hidden behind the hinges. I don't know why they're there. Probably just so you can forget to put them in and have to take the door back off to put them back in. Pop our switches out of there cover behind the handle and then we can get the screws out of there and pull our door panel off. Deposit that one directly in the pile. It's been outside for a little too long. Disconnect our handle and our lock and disconnect our speaker. Then we can unplug our other speaker and bolt it from the door and pry it out of there. found a present. It's the door check we dropped in there a while back. We'll pull the door panel off the back, covers up the latch, take the little baby buggy bumper out and then pull it off of there. Then we'll take the little clips off to hold it in and there's some gaskets on there so we'll peel those off the doors, put them back on the clips and that way we can use them later. We can unplug our other speaker. A lot of speakers in this door. And bolt that. Then we can pull the trim off around the top of the window. There's a couple of Christmas trees on each end and then it just clips into the door. Now we can pull our wiring harness off of here and start pulling the water barrier off. So it is wee fun stuff that holds it on. Makes a mess. Try and get as much to stay on the water barrier as we can. Get the wiring harness out of here. Put the water barrier out of our way, we can get to the rest of the clips for our wiring harness. Pop those off of there. We can pull our wiring harness out of here. Unbolt our regulator and our window track. Slide our regulator out of here. And we'll slide the glass down. Pull the little covers off of there so we can get to the bolt for the window track. 
we got to pull this rubber gasket out. There's one bolt on the top, the screw. At one time it was a Phillips head, but it's a little rusty. We got it out of there. Good thing I really didn't want to drill it out and I forgot my rounded off Phillips screwdriver to take out the rounded off Phillips heads. We can pull our window channel out of here and then we can pull out our little stationary glass. We can slide the glass up and pull that out of here. Now we can reach in there and we can get to all the little clips for our door gasket. Trying to save them all. We'll get the ones we can off from the inside by squeezing the tabs, and then we'll just we'll find something else to do because I've lost patience. We're gonna remove the gooey fun stuff. So if you take a blob of it and you stick it to the stuff that's still stuck to the door, and just keep kind of peeling it off, it comes back off. Wax and grease remover dissolves it, but it's real thick. It just makes a mess. So you try to get most of it off, and any residue that's left, the wax and grease remover will take it right off. So we got our wax and grease remover, and you can see it just turns it into a black gooey mess. But if you waste enough time and use enough wax and grease remover, it will come off of there. By the time you're done, the rag will end up completely black. And your hands. I guess you could wear gloves. Now we have our door lock actuator unbolted, so we can just slide it down and then slide it out of here. And if you're very quiet, you can hear it going bad. And that allows us access to the little cap on the back of the door handle. Pop that off of there. And there's one screw in the front of the door handle. It's a little rusty. Slide our door handle back. Pull our gaskets off of there. We can remove the rest of the door handle from the door. Pull our belt molding off. Now we can start drilling all of our rivets out with the molding across the top. And just pry the molding off the rest of the rivet. And now we can pull the rest of this trim off of here. It's just two-sided tape on. So we put our pliers in there to give us a little space. We'll slide our scraper down there. Break that two-sided tape off. It's only plastic. And then there's one clip at the top that kind of lines it up. There's supposed to be one at the bottom, but it's not with us anymore. Now we can unbolt our seat back. We can take it out of here. We prime the outside of the car, but the inside of the pinch weld there where I welded is still bare metal. So I need the seat out of the way so that the painter can get in there and get some primer on it and get it all painted up for us. Pop these little caps off so we can slide our seat belt out. It's a tab you just push in in the back and then lift up. Slide it off the extender piece. And our seat's ready to come out of here. Not a lot of room. Back seat of this car is not very roomy. Now our door is all painted, so we can start putting it back together, temporarily anyway. We're just gonna put the door latch in there so we can latch the door so that he can paint it. Won't be opening up on him. Snap our rubber baby buggy bumper in there. And we'll put the little caps in behind the hinges so we don't forget them. And it's a miracle I didn't forget them already. We'll put our door striker back in. Paint it down to manufacturer specs. Click. And we can put our door back up here. A lot lighter now. But I always line it up with the door loaded because when I latch this and tighten it up and when I open the door, it's actually going to pop up a little bit. It's not going to hang right because the weight is missing. But when I put everything back together, 
it should hang like it's supposed to. Now we'll put our striker in for our front door. Tighten that up. Click. Now we can pull our front door off so we can get that all edged out. And yes, it probably would have been easier to take that off when I took everything else off and have it painted. At least that's what the painting gnome told me, but I didn't want multiple doors all over the shop. There wasn't a whole lot of room. So, oh, look, a present. I got an extra door lock switch. That's that in a pile. We'll continue pulling our door off. Anyway, I didn't want all the doors laying around the shop, so I just left this one on. We painted everything else. It wasn't in the way. And now we put the rear door on. We can take the front door off, and we only have one door at a time taking up space. But in a perfect world, it would have been easier just to paint everything at once. But it looks like a tornado went through the shop and junk is laying everywhere. So I don't have room for two more doors laying around. Taking our front door apart, pretty much the same as our rear door. And both our regulator and our window tracks, speakers, more gooey fun stuff. Some more bolts for the regulator. We'll pull our little caps out behind the hinges and bolt our door lock actuator. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, you've seen enough. Now our door is magically painted, so we'll throw our caps back in here before we forget. One behind each hinge and a bonus one on the bottom here. Also, I have no clue what this one does, but we'll put them back. Toyota thought they were important. Put our rubber baby buggy bumper in the back. Now we're ready to throw the door back on the car. Put it up on our door stand. We'll get the top bolt started. And then we can tighten all the rest of them up. Now we'll put our latch in there. We're only going to put a couple bolts in it, just enough to keep it closed so the painter can get it painted. And he did. Now it's time to get it all back together. We're going to start by putting some cavity wax in our little rocker piece here that we replaced. I'm going to make sure that we get on all the sides of the panels inside. Give it a nice coating because there is bare metal in there. And it never hurts to have a little extra rust proof. Here we get up on our B pillar. We'll put all the rubber plugs back in. And we'll set our bumper back up here in with the bumper installation tool. Now we can start putting our door together. Drop our mirror in here. Feed the wiring harness through. And then clip it into the door. Now we can pull our wiring harness out the other side and put our nuts back on. The wiring harness into the door and then we can fish the rest of the wiring harness in feed it through the door and start clipping it in we can put our handle for the outside in this is the base slides in a, a slot in the door and then one screw to tighten it down in there. Clip in the wiring harness. Put our gaskets in for our door handle. We can feed the wire through for our door handle. Put the front in, slide it forward. And then we'll put our cap back on. I'm going to tighten down the front of the door handle and tighten down the cap in the back and our door handle is secure. Plug it all in. 
and put our little plug in the back end. And we can put our door lock actuator in. Hope it down and hope it works. It's working now. No guarantees it'll keep working. Now we can slide our regulator in here. Start all of our bolts and tighten them all down. We'll put our door check back in there. We can put our door gasket on. Now that we have the bottom portion of the gasket on there, we can put our real door check in there. Because our other one was kind of defective. Tighten down our door check. Before we can go all the way around the door with our gasket, we need to put this upper trim in because it actually clips into it. We'll clip it around the pinch weld. And then we'll put our rivet in there. And we'll tighten it down. I didn't want to start the air compressor, so I can't use the assault riveter. i to use the semi-auto. And once that's in there, we can push our gasket in. It's kind of a T-channel, so it slides in on one side and squeeze the gasket together and it clips in. Pull the backing off our two-sided tape, toss it on the ground for the sea turtles to play with. And now we can this little trim piece on here. Push it on. We can slide our belt molding in here. Flip it in with our belt molding installation tool. And if your belt molding is peeling and you want to know how I took care of this one, uh, there is a video. I'll put a link up at the top and go ahead and watch that and show you how I fixed it. We can put our little triangle up in the corner. There's one bolt in the center in the back. Drop our window channel in here. Flip it into the track. You don't have to push it all the way in there. Just get it close and when you put the window up, it'll usually clip in. There's a little piece of the track that we got to put in the bottom. The top just has a tab that slides in there. And our channel is in the way. So bolt that in and we'll tuck our channel back in there. Now I can drop the door glass in there. We're gonna use the original one, because it's tinted, and I like to keep it original. I even left the original dirt on it. Don't wanna clean it off and make the clean freaks happy. So you set it down. Get it lined up in the channel, and then rock it back into place. My front channel wasn't in. There we go. Now we'll lower it down into the regulator and bolt it into the regulator. Plug in our window switch, make sure our window works. These do have to be programmed just by putting them all the way up and all the way down. And we'll throw some cavity wax on the bottom of this door. So at least two of these doors will not be rusty in the future. Good luck to the other side. Unless it goes back to Texas. Then it'll be nice and clean forever. Well, we'll put our water barrier back on here. Slide our cables through. And slide the harness through. Go through in a couple different places. Plastic kind of overlaps. We'll stick the gooey fun stuff on there. Never speak of this again. Plug in our actuator. Make 
sure it's adhered to the door. I don't want any water leaking in there. Plug in the rest of our harness, bolt in our speaker, and plug it in. We can bolt in our other speaker and plug that in. We can put our trim around the window in, just clip it in. Christmas trees back in the bottom. And make sure it's really in there. We'll put the trim panel on the back. It slides into those little clips. It also slides into that upper trim. Let's use the belt molding installation tool to clip it in there. We'll put our other rubber baby buggy bumper in there. Before we put the door panel back on, we need to pull the window sweep off of it. When you lift the door panel off, it comes with, but to put it back on, it has to be on the door first and then just pushes on. It's a lot easier than trying to set it down in that little groove. So we'll put the window sweep back in. And then we can put our door panel back up. Plug in our light in the back. Stick our harness in there. And we can start attaching our cables for our handle and our door lock. And because we already took our window sweep off of our door panel and put it on our door, we can install the door panel just like the factory did. Pull our wiring harness through here, line up our door panel, and smash it on. If you choose to leave the window sweep on the back of the door panel, you can get it in there. It's just a lot harder to get that window sweep to slide down over the pinch weld when it's attached to the back of the door panel. So spending the extra couple seconds to pull it off the back of the door panel saves quite a bit of struggle in the long run. Put all our bolts behind our handle and our switches in. Put the cover back on our handle and plug in our switches and clip those in. I'll put our little cover over our door striker because it's a Lexus and we can't look at that ugly door striker. We'll put our little button in there. We'll put our cover over our rear striker and put the button in the back door. We just had those out of there so we could paint it all. And now we can put our taillight back in. Put in all of our bulbs. Slide it into the tab on the front of the light. Put it in and bolt it in. Now we can put our trim around our top of our rear door. Flip it on there. Try to line up all the holes. They're oval shaped, but there is one that's round. So start with that one. That centers everything. Back to using the semi-automatic riveter. Now we can put our handle base in for the outside handle. Slide it into that notch in the door. And tighten up the screw in the front to hold it in. Be sure to use your door handle tightening face for proper installation. Use the original handles because the ones that are from around here get a little rusty and they don't like to tighten up. Let me put our gaskets in for our door handle. And yes, I'm going to leave that dirt on there. Slide the front of the door handle in. No wiring in this one. Slide it in place. Make sure our gasket's in there. Put the cap on the back. And that'll hold our gasket in. And tighten up our cap. And tighten up the front of the handle. Now we can slide our door latch back up in there. There's a V-shaped rod for the handle on the outside, so the actuator just slides up into it. Nothing to clip in. Just have to make sure it engages. Tighten down our latch. Now we can start running our wiring harness through the door. 
I used all the original wiring harnesses just because they might be different and there are no part numbers on them. Got to relax the bottom of the door. I didn't plug in the door lock actuator. The plug is just sitting in there so it's not dangling in my way. I'm going to have to take it back off to fish it through the water barrier. Now we can throw our window regulator in here. Start our bolts. And tighten it all down. And we put our stationary glass in. Come on. There you go. This is your glass installation tool. And we'll drop our window channel in there and clip it in. Work our way all the way around. And we can drop our original door glass in here with original window tint and original dirt. It's kind of like numbers matching, right? Even though the numbers don't match. Not anymore. We'll set it down in there. Try not to drop it. And we can put our window track in the back. You have to have that out of there in order for the window to go down in there. Slide it into our stationary glass. And we'll put our window channel back up there. Put our screw back in the top of that track. And put our bolts in the bottom of it. Now we can start putting our door gasket on here. Clip it in. That little T channel. And then we can start with our little push pins all the way around. Once we got that on there, now we can put our door check on. Bolt it in. And it goes on the other side of the door check. That's why you have to put that in before the door check. Pull the backing off our two-sided tape. And toss it on the floor. Feed the sea turtles. And then we can stick it onto our door. Make sure it ain't going anywhere. We'll put our belt molding in. Slide it into the molding in the back. And then clip it down with the belt molding installation tool. Now we can fish our wiring harness through our water barrier. I did bolt the regulator to the window. At least I hope I did. I didn't film it. Pull our wiring harness through the front of our water barrier. And start sticking it to the door. And we're done with gooey fun stuff for now. Put our speaker in, bolt it in and plug it in. Now we put our trim around the top of the window. Flip it in. You can use the belt molding installation tool for that. Put your Christmas trees in there. And we'll check and make sure the window works. And we'll put the rear trim on. Make sure it slides onto the tabs. And smash it on there. Now we can put our rubber baby buggy pump around there to hold it in. We'll plug in our speaker our door handle and our door lock. And our door panel is ready to go back up here. Smash it onto the door. And 
put our screws back in underneath the handle and the switches. Put our cover back on under the handle. And plug in our switch and clip it in there. Then we start putting our B pillar back together. There's a little piece of sponge at the bottom. And then we'll put this little pocket in there. And then we can put our seat belt in. Open the bottom, open the top, and plug it in. There's one plug in the front for the retensioner and one in the back for the light to let the car know that the seat belt is on. Fish the rest of the belt to the top of the B pillar trim. Stuff it through there. And now we can bolt the belt in. And now we can put this trim in. Slides into a tab up behind the headliner. And we'll put the screws in the bottom of it. And make sure our height adjuster works. Now we can put the bottom in. There is a plug that goes in the bottom. So we'll fish that through the hole in the carpeting. Then we can put our bolt in. Tighten that down. Get our socket back. And put the cover back on. Clip our wiring harness in. And plug it in. We'll grab the lower trim. Line it up, clip it into the pillar. Make sure the gasket on the outside is overlapping it. And what's not, you just pull it out with your fingers. Install our sill plate with our sill plate installation tool. And we'll put the rear trim on. It in, pull that gasket out, and we can put our sill plate in the back. And now we're ready to put our seat in here. Set it in there, pull our seat belt out, it's trapped underneath. We'll lift it up. Slide the little tabs in the back. There's three metal tabs. Slide down. We'll pull our seat belts down. We'll stuff them through the little elastic tab on the bottom. It keeps them in place so they don't get lost. We'll bolt them all to the floor, the seats and seat belts. Now we're going to put our seatbelt back in our little extending clips. Just open it up, slide them in, and clip them back down. And now we're going to make the clean freaks happy. We're going to vacuum this out before we put the seat in. There's lots of junk in there. It's easier to do it now than make the detailer try to Cram the vacuum in between the seat and the console. Now that our floor is nice and clean, I feel comfortable enough to install the bottom of the rear seat. So we're gonna put our buckles through the seat. There's a little slot that they go through and it's covered with a little elastic piece just to make it extra hard to see down in there and uh, also get the seat belt buckles through there. Take a little fabric collar in there see belts don't like to go through it but they're going to one way or another so we'll slide the tabs in the back and then latch the front of the seat down give it a good hit 
looked like they must have had a dog. There were some scratches in the bottom of that seat. I'll throw the front seat in. Set it down in there. We can rock it back into place. And plug in all of our wiring harnesses. Once everything's plugged in, we can bolt it in. Find that down in manufacturer specs. Three electric Ugga Duggas. Then we'll put the caps back on. And then we can put our seat back so that we can get to the bolt in the front. And bolt those down. There's a couple of alignment pins right behind the front seat bolts. That's why I felt comfortable bolting the rear bolts all the way in without the front bolt being started. I wasn't dying. And got stuck in the seat. Put the caps back on. Then I'm going to go hammer that dime flat so I can spend it because I'm poor and according to the experts I don't make any money on these rebuilds so I need that. And now we can put our headrest back in. A little button on the side that you press allows you to adjust it. And now we can put our headlight back in. We had this out because we did paint the fender, so I had the front bumper down. So we just slipped the headlight in behind the bumper and past the fender. And slide it back into the fender tabs. And there's a one tab up on the top. Get it all lined up. And we'll engage that top tab and then we can install our bolt in. We can plug it in. Set our bumper up there and clip it into the headlight and in the bottom of the fender. Bolt our grill down. There's one multi-purpose rubber baby buggy bumper over here that holds the bumper in place and also keeps things from bumping into it, I guess. We put our little gasket over here on the side. This clips into the top of the fender. Then we can put our pretty cover over the air box in. And put the clothes off in. Put our little push pins in there and close the hood. Now we can throw our rocker molding back up on the driver's side. Clip the top of it in. Put our one screw in the back. And put our screw up in the front. I wonder how many comments I'll get about the peeling clear coat that isn't. We'll put our bolt in the wheel opening in the back. And all of our push pins across the bottom, and our bolt in the wheel opening in the front. Now we can put our bolt in our rear bumper. We just set that up there before. Put the little cap in there and snap that in there. Now we can put our wheel liner in, our carpeted one. And if you're wondering why they're carpeting, it's a they deaden the sound, and so that they collect lots of dirt, because, well, that's exactly what they do. Somebody ate it. So we need to change this front wheel liner. This one is plastic. Not sure why they use plastic on the front and carpeted in the back, but this one is a lot more intelligent because the padding is on the inside where it's not going to get dirty. Well, it's supposed to be. This one was kind of hanging all over the place. So we'll unbolt it. And pull it out of there. And then you can see the padding on the back. That's the much smarter way to do it. So we'll put our new one on there. It's an aftermarket one. It was a lot cheaper than the original one. And it's just a piece of plastic to keep the dirt out of it. Put all of our screws and push pins back in it. And tuck it up underneath the bumper. 
So we need to go test out our splash shield, and since it's raining, we'll give it a try. Uh, we're also checking our wheel bearing. You guys to hear it. If you can hear it on video, you know it's pretty bad. So you can hear it change with the speed of the car. And it definitely changes when you shift planes side to side. So, as you heard, we need to change this wheel bearing. It's not a bad job, it's actually pretty easy, but while I was in here, I did notice that this drive axle is torn and it's slinging grease all over the place. So we're gonna need to change that drive axle. In order to change the drive axle, you just pull that suspension apart and you can get the end of the drive axle out of it. And then you go over here and you pull that little bolt out and there's a snap ring on the outside edge. And that drive axle goes all the way through to the differential here on the other side. Nothing holds that drive axle into the differential other than that snap ring on the outside. So in theory, once that's gone, it should just come right out. However, uh, if anyone has ever breathed on it, uh, it starts to rust in there. And the bearing that's in that edge uh, freezes into the oil pan. And because it runs through the center of the oil pan there, there's really no way to get to the back of it. And sometimes you have to pull the differential off so you can hammer the end of it out. I've had to do that a couple times. In order to get the differential out, you have to drop the subframe. So this job that should take about half an hour could turn into like a 10 hour job, depending on how bad it is. But since it's a Texas car, there's a chance it might not be too bad. But remember, in theory, the engineer that designed this Figured you just take that snap ring off and it'll always just fall apart. And then engineers wonder why mechanics don't like them. Well, that's about as far as we're going to go on our Lexus for today. I thought we could get it all done, but this drive axle is either going to be a 30 minute job or a 10 hour job. And well, you're going to have to tune in next time to see which one it is. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then. I don't ever smoke up. No, I don't take. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement.